My name is Chad. I am um, I'm the children's pastor at a church in Olympia called Evergreen Christian Community. I've been there a year and two months now. Um, in fact, today is my one year and two months anniversary. I'm getting me by this counting, right? Um, and uh, I've loved every, well, not every minute of it, but I've loved most, you know, all the minutes of, of my time there. And uh, I've loved most of all my time in ministry so far. Um, but um, over the past year and a half, um, there's there have been like a million things that I thought, man, I, like that would have been awesome if I would have learned that in college. Um, because I, you know, I dropped a lot of money to go to, uh, to go to my college and um, I majored in the degree that is very, it's pretty specific for children's ministry. It's called children's ministry. Um, and, uh, and then I, I also majored in uh, biblical literature, so it's kind of the more like um, theological side, biblical side of stuff um, that, uh, yeah, just makes you think really, really too hard. But um, I, uh, my first year in ministry has been an extremely awesome learning curve. Um, <laughs> I'll give you just a tad bit of history about myself so you can kind of understand who I am as I talk, but um, my uh, second year at Northwest, I was at Northwest three years, so at my second year at Northwest, I um, started volunteering at this church right here. In fact, there used to be like cubicles and stuff, and my office was like right where you are, um, so you're, you're in my old cubicle office. I can office, feel that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people say like, you can still feel you around here, but... Um, <laughs> So I, I kind of uh, like volunteered and um, ended up being brought on like three days later as the children's pastor at uh, a new campus that they were going to launch. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I don't know anything. Uh, like, I'm taking my very first children's ministry class right now. And I volunteered before, but that's about it. So I said, yeah, what the heck, why not, you know? Um, so I did it, and it was an awesome uh, learning experience. Maple Valley is another 20 minutes down uh, well, Maple Valley Highway, um, and uh, so from Kirkland to Maple Valley, it was about 45 minutes, and my stipend um, maybe barely covered the gas money that it cost to, to drive out there, but um, I don't regret any, any moment of it because um, it was an amazing experience to be able to be a part of a, kind of like a church plant in a sense, but also be a part of a, an amazing church that New Life is, and then um, and, and learn from all the people in it. So, I did that for two years, and then as I graduated, I came full-time here, um, was full-time here for three months, and um, I, uh, in fact, Brent Colby came up to me at a kid's camp, uh, not last kid's camp, but the kid's camp before, and he put his arm around me and said, hey, I'm taking over the, the uh, children's ministry director for, for the network, and I, uh, I got a job for you, and I'm like, that's cool, I already got an awesome job, and I love it, and I'm, you know, I immediately kind of just shoved it off, um, thinking, I love where I'm at. I'm comfortable, and um, I love the people I work with. A lot of my really, a lot of my best friends like still work here. A lot of my best friends still go here, um, and I didn't. I didn't really have any interest in leaving. Um, but I figured out oh, what the heck. I'll go. I'll go down there and and humor them and uh, and at least go to the interview and, and see like you know get the experience of an interview and fell in love with Evergreen. Um, a totally different, totally different culture. Totally different. Um, everything um, in Olympia and in Evergreen than it is in Renton and, and New Life, but um, I've absolutely loved my time so far. And um, let's see, I uh, I was 22 when I went full time at Evergreen. Evergreen's a church of about 17, 15 to 1700, um, give or take, depending on if the Seahawks are playing. Um, <laughs> Happy Blue Friday, everybody! I'm a huge Seahawks fan. I should, if you want to, you can see a picture of my office later on before you leave. It's it's pretty rad. Her, this is Jennifer. She works at Evergreen, but her sister, like, helped me paint. It, I, you just gotta see it. You gotta see it. Through. It's amazing. I posted on Instagram. Russell Wilson liked it, so it was like my it was like my favorite day of my life. Um, yeah. I don't get starstruck, but when Russell Wilson likes my photo on Instagram, that's when I start blushing. Um, where was I? <laughs> oh, uh, Evergreen's, a, Evergreen's a church of about 1,700. Um, Olympia is a, a, a total different culture, um, so it was a really big learning curve for me. Um, so I, uh, I have um, eight things that I had to learn really quick in ministry. Um, and some of you guys, um, some of you guys might like say, "Oh, that's 
elementary, and I can't believe you didn't know that. Um, and I think a lot of these are things that I had, I'd probably heard before, um, but really it was hard for me to um, really, really learn about it and learn how to, how to deal with this, these problems or these issues or whatever you want to call them um, until I was actually in the mix. But um, I figured I would, I would give you guys the eight things, and hopefully um, if you're going in the ministry, if you're in ministry, um, whatever it is you're doing, um, you, you would be able to um, learn, learn something a little bit easier than I had to learn. So, um, number one, this is something I was told, find a mentor. Um, but I learned the, the importance of that um, right away in, in my job uh, in ministry. Um, Dwayne, who some of you guys met last night, he was on stage for like 30 seconds and he ran off. But he was the, uh, he was the BGMC guy on stage. He, he's a children's pastor here, and uh, he, kind of, he kind of brought me under his wing, and um, even while I was at New Life, you know, he was, he's kind of one of those tough love type of people, like, hey, that was so dumb, like, what the heck were you thinking, you're an idiot, like, totally, that's totally his style, but, like, that's totally the way, like, that I, uh, you know, he does it in love, so, it's not, it's not bad, it's, he's an amazing, amazing, amazing guy to have as a, as a mentor, a friend, and uh, just somebody that I can really do life with, so, the first thing that I um, would say is find somebody, um, whether it's another children's pastor, um, somebody who's in ministry, or somebody who's doing something that whatever you're doing in life, that can help coach you along the way. Um, here's three three things of, that I would say that are that are huge to find that person, uh, someone who's someone who is okay with you calling every other day. Because I remember like my first like two months, I like. I felt like so bad. I'm like texting them and calling them and like emailing them. I'm like, hey, can you send me this? Can you can you like help me out? What should I do here? Hey, this is awkward. Like, um, what am I gonna do? If you guys didn't get pizza, looks like pizza's here. Um, don't feel like you're gonna be rude, um, Kelsey, unless you're eating all of that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, don't feel like you're gonna be rude if you need to get up and, and get some pizza because I have it and it was really good and I'm really happy. So feel free. Um, Next thing is someone, uh, uh, another, another thing to find in a mentor is someone who will hook you up with resources. Um, I mean, there's, there's so many resources on the internet, but um, if you don't know somebody who's like in ministry and you can't, you can't give them a call and say, hey, what do you use and what do you, what do, you do for, for worship and what curriculum do you use and um, all this different stuff, um, that's a huge, huge bonus. So Dwayne was that guy. I'm, in fact, he, uh, you guys saw the kids area. Um, fun fact about the way, he's like this creative, like, evil genius. Like, I don't understand that. He designed all of that, um, had it printed on wallpaper, and he designed the carpet. Like, there's, you know, if you go down the boardwalk, it's like, the carpet's like this tan color because it's like you're on a beach, like, sandy beach. I'm like, what the heck? How do you even come up with that, with that stuff? There's a road that leads into Kid Town. And he's just a super creative guy. And uh, so I... Um, I'll tell, tell you a little bit more about this in my second one, but um, uh, he helped me do a big, big remodel. It was because I knew him. I had that connection. I knew that he did awesome work. Um, and if, I, if he didn't do awesome work, he would say, hey, this person can do it. Um, so having somebody that can hook you up with resources. And then number three, someone who isn't afraid to tell you that something is a dumb idea or that you really messed up on that and you should probably um, do something a little different next time. Uh, I love that and I hate that so stinking much, um, but it's super important. I think it's I think that's the biggest fault that that we can have as um, children's pastors is siloing ourselves in our own churches. I, that's what I love about uh, fusion and, and nitro and kids camps and all these different things that we do and together as a as a network. I don't know if you're part of the Assemblies of God or whatever, but. Um, being part of something bigger and allowing, uh, having time to like speak with other children's pastors and hear what they're doing, it's huge. Um, so, number one, finding a mentor. Number two, I kind of got to cheat on this one a little bit, but um, do something great in your first six months. Um, especially, especially, especially if you're a young, a young person going into children's ministry. Um, <laughs> for me, I was there for a month. Uh, before my children's or my my pastor like introduced me to the congregation, um, just because that's how it worked with the service flow and everything that was 
going on, but um, <laughs> so he brings me up on stage and he's like, hey, this is Chad, he's 22, he's our children's pastor, and um, uh, yeah, we want, we want you guys to welcome him on, welcome him on to the team. Um, something I forgot to tell you is I'm, I'm 23 now, so I'm a little older, I can grow a little bit more facial hair. Um, <laughs> just little, not really, actually, I can't. <laughs> um, but uh, Evergreen is, is uh, I'm, like I said, I'm 23, and I think the next youngest pastor on staff is like 37, 38 years old. So there's like this giant like chasm that is that's in between us, and and really like you wouldn't know. Like I found out that one of one of our pastors was a little bit older. I'm like, what? Like I totally thought you were like late 20s. Um, but it's it's super interesting because coming from New Life, New Life is like uh, one of my one of my best friends, Isaiah. He's he's actually a year younger than me, and he's like. Uh, you know, he's one of the, he's on the teaching team. Like he preaches to uh, to everybody here at, at New Life. And then I've got um, you know the youth pastor and all these different people that I've worked with that are like my age. And I'm like, okay, these are this is cool. Like these these are my people. And like I don't have to build credibility because this guy over here he's younger than me, so I can be like I'm older than him. And he's preaching to everybody. So um, for me, it was it was a really like like oh my goodness, I gotta because I'm like the guy, I'm the face. Like, I need to build that credibility. Um, I need to let parents know that they can trust me. Um, and I'm, I look like some punk kid, um, but I'm not um, most, of, most of the time. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I, uh, my, right after that, right after he introduced me, I went back down and were, uh, was saying goodbye to families as they left. And uh, had, like, two parents, like, apologize to me. They're like, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that you're the new children's pastor. I thought you were just like a high school volunteer or something. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that. Um, so, uh, do something great in the first six months is a uh, a huge thing that will help you build credibility. I don't I don't necessarily that th think that that has to do with something uh, to do with your age either, um, because people are going to have their um, people are going to people are going to not like look for something um, bad in you, but they're going to. They're gonna they're gonna have their expectations and um, one of your jobs I think is in the first week is, or in the first six months is just to to blow their expectations out of the water um, or if their expectations are like something that's not you then don't get caught up at, over it or whatever but um, so I I got to go to Evergreen um, when Brent put his arm around me he's like hey uh, at camp and he's like hey I've got a job for you um, they're doing a huge remodel and you've got like a hundred thousand dollars to spend on this giant remodel. And I'm like, oh that's awesome. Like that would be sweet. And I just walked through um, with Dwayne seeing how he did the remodel here. So uh, I got to cheat a little bit and I got to spend like a hundred grand and do this like amazing remodel and all of you guys out there, Shelly's like, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> but so that but honestly like um, that was uh, a huge, huge um, way for me to build credibility. I didn't know that. Like I didn't I didn't say, oh yeah, I get to build credibility by doing a big remodel. I was just like, sweet, I get to make this place like my own and I kinda get to redesign it from the from the floor and uh, and go on for what's gonna look like for the next X amount of years. Um, but really like people began to realize, oh, okay, this kid is not a he's not a joke. He's not a he's not just some uh, college kid who stays up playing Nintendo sixty four all night long, which I would love to actually. Um, <laughs> I'm responsible. I'm responsible adult. I'll take you on Star Fox right after this. It's in the it's in the console right now. Oh. Um, yeah, so that was that was huge. And a lot of these things that I'm talking about are not things that I like. I'm like, I need to find a mentor because that's gonna help me in my first year. I'm gonna do something amazing in the first six months because that's gonna help me build credibility. Like, that's, that's not what happened. It was just like, oh, whoops. That's a, that was an accident. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, along with, along with uh, number two, I have them lettered on here. Uh, so number three is um, you can just put um, be careful with change. I just put change on here. Mm -hmm. Be careful with change. Um, because what, what a, lot of, a lot of people go into ministry and I think they, they think, okay, I'm going to change this and change that. And, uh, and do all sorts of crazy, crazy things at, uh, like right at the get-go. 
and uh, I've got people making faces at me, and I'm like, this is really distracting. Uh, I'm, I'm guess I am that young, mature children's pastor. They, you go in and you think, you think, okay, this is stupid, and I want to change this and this and this. And yeah, you might think it's stupid, um, but you also have to be smart about the, the way that you you go about making change. Um, because you know, I say do something do something big in the first six months. That doesn't mean go in and fire all your staff and hire like five new people to work under you because you want to make it your own. Like that's that'd be the worst thing that you could do. Um, because families are connected to those those people. But um, what I'm saying is be smart about the change. So choose your battles, number one. And then uh, number two, um, I think I think starting small, um, smaller changes, like things that are like, like uh, you know, somebody wouldn't die die over. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of like an like an example, um, you know, maybe some like maybe your lobby space or something looked just absolutely ugly, and uh, you wanted to spruce it up by buying some benches or some seating area, like seat, places for people to seat. Like that's an awesome change and people will notice and they're like, oh that's awesome, sweet. Um, and then as you build that credibility, as you do something in the first six months, whatever you touch, people are like, okay that's awesome, whatever he touches is gold, so I'm going to let him go ahead and, and make that change. So um, another thing that I'll say along with that, with that change thing is if you do something big like a remodel, if you do something um, Something not not something that's like a necessarily a uh, would be considered like a bad change by anybody like you know us putting up wallpaper and making this amazing kids area an amazing kids area. I don't know that I at least I personally didn't hear one complaint from anybody in the entire church, um, which is a blessing in and of itself. But um, if you do if you do make big changes and people are seeing changes on the outside, that's a great time for you to make the changes on the inside. Um, I'm not an expert, and some people may disagree, but uh, you know, we, we changed our curriculum right there because at that time because um, they're, they're like, okay, it's a new face. You're going to have new people want to get involved because it looks totally different. Um, and you're going you're gonna, to, everybody, everybody there is like, okay, this is, a, this is something new, and I'm just going to expect new things because it looks new, so it must be new. So that's a great time for you to change um, big things. I wasn't taught that in college, um, but yeah, just an FYI, just a, a uh, disclaimer. I absolutely loved the college I went to. I went to Northwest University. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. Um, and uh, so there's nothing against it. Like I said, it's just stuff that I had, had to learn um, on my own. So um, when you do make changes, say, say things like... Um, we're, don't say things like, hey, we're going to get rid of this or we're going to kill this. Um, rather say, hey, we're going to start doing this. Um, because a lot of those things can be sacred cows. Like even if it's like, uh, you know, if, if during your elementary worship time you've got, um, they pick ten kids to come up and play like, yeah, <laughs> waving, waving banners or, or flags or, uh, or they come up and they play tambourines during worship time or something like that. And uh, maybe you do that and that's fine, but... For me, like that's that would be really distracting for for me and, and the environment that we're in. So maybe that's a sacred cow because maybe this volunteer has been volunteering with the kids ministry for 20 years, as long as I've been alive. And then you come in and say, "Hey, we're going to get rid of that." Rather than saying we're going to get rid of that, you say, "Hey, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to start doing this, and we're going to start getting kids up there who are who are really singing. They're leading worship and they're leading the motions, and and uh, we're going to get some high schoolers up there who are." who are uh, like cool and hip who um, kids would look up to so that they can um, lead people into worship. So I think the, the verbiage I use is super important when you're, when you're making change. So really be careful with, with, uh, with change. All right, um, next thing is culture. Um, this is kind of a, um, you can put create culture, create your culture. Um, there's a, um, there's two sides to culture that I that I see, but they uh, they ultimately come to they come together as one. You'll you'll understand what I'm saying in a second. Um, culture as a whole, like culture as a whole church. Um, Troy Jones, who you heard speak last night, he was he is like kind of one of those spiritual fathers to me. Um, you know, I call him Papa Troy, and I've like been over to his house for Thanksgiving, all that kind of stuff. And 
I love that guy to death. He's he's an incredible, incredible, incredible leader of leaders, uh, and respect him like forever. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity that he gave this 19-year-old kid to come be a children's pastor and oversee a campus. Like like that was awesome. Um, pastor at uh, Evergreen, Jim, completely, totally different than than Troy is. I absolutely love my pastor at Evergreen. He is super conversational. Like, I could sit down and talk with him for hours and hours and hours. Um, he leads in a completely different manner. He, he leads a church in a completely different manner than Troy does. And that was crazy for me to understand. That was crazy for me to grasp. Because I came from, from a church that I saw go from, uh, from the time that I was working at, I saw go from 1,900 people to almost 4,000 people um, in a matter of two, two years. I'm like, New Life does church right. And I'm going to take all the ideas that I learned from New Life and go over there and implement them all at Evergreen. It's going to be awesome. And I, like, I remember sitting, um, like, in my in my office before it was awesome Seahawk colors. It was just this ugly gray, and maybe that had to do a little bit with my frustration. I'm like, this is ugly. But I, uh, I just was super frustrated that, uh, like, people weren't getting it. I'm like, why doesn't this church get it? Why aren't they, you know, why aren't they doing this and this and this and this? And I wasn't speaking out because I didn't want to seem like the arrogant type. And um, again, I was 22 and didn't want to lose all my credibility by saying this is stupid. Um, but at the same time, like I really believe that New Life is doing church right. And as I um, began to hang out in Olympia, um, Olympia is a very interesting place. Um, the west side of Olympia, where Evergreen is, it's all right. If you get on the hill about a mile, like you're like, what in the world did I just enter into? Like it's like Portland, Seattle, like. It's like Hickville, like it's all sorts of random people um, in Olympia, and I absolutely I love it. Um, so I, I began to realize, okay, so that's why we do church a little bit different. That's why, uh, that's why, from you know, Jim's Jim is very like a conversational um, preacher. He's got this mentality of, hey, uh, let's lower the pulpit, let's speak speak with with the with the crowd rather than at the crowd, and. Um, and here, like, that's, I don't know that it would work. All I know is what Troy does, it works. Like, he's, this church is growing, and, and people are coming to know Jesus, like, left and right. And I know that what Jim is doing at Evergreen is totally different, but what he's doing is we're seeing tons and tons of people come to know Jesus. And if that's what matters, then who cares how we do it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it was, that was a super hard time for me. Like, within, like, the first four months, I kind of finally realized okay, I need, to, I need to just swallow my pride, really, and, uh, and recognize that um, the, way that, the way that Evergreen does church is totally different than the way that my old church did church. The culture of Evergreen is completely different from the culture of, of New Life. I love both, and I would love to be a part of either one of them, um, but I'm at Evergreen, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I fall under the culture and the vision of my lead pastor, and then I'm going to create that culture, which is the second part. So you got to the culture of the church as a whole, and the culture of your children's ministry. Now, I'm not saying there's two different cultures. Those need to be the same culture. Um, but what I was trying to do is I was almost trying to change the culture from the inside out, from like the children's ministry, and try to influence the rest of the church. Um, but really what I should, what should have been doing in the first place was um, adapting the culture of Evergreen to Evergreen kids, as we call it. Um, so I, uh, when I first, um, when I first got to Evergreen, there was um, there were there were volunteers here and there, and I mean during the interim time, you know, a lot of them dropped off, and we didn't have very many volunteers. And if you're a children's pastor, you can say, yeah, amen. I never have any volunteers, <laughs> but um, like it was, it was bad. Like it was scarce. Like, like I remember my second week there, like it was me and my admin, and that was it. Like I'm like, what? Like, are you serious? Like, is this happening right now? And uh, that was actually the first week that I decided to get up and speak because I watched for a week and then I, then I jumped up there. But um, So that was awkward. Um, but then there's also this awkward thing where I had, uh, I had you know, a, a few people who were, like, they were committed. Um, and they were, they, were, uh, they were super committed to, um, to their ideas, basically. And they were super, uh, uh, well... Let's just say this. Um, they were weird people. Like, there were some weird people that were volunteering. Uh, there were some weird people that were volunteering in the, in the kids' ministry. 
And um, I began to realize, um, three weeks into it, I was trying to figure out why there were no cool people. Like, like you know, like, why are there no, like, not, not necessarily cool people either, but, like, legit, like, leaders who are ready to not just, like, volunteer, but they're ready to, like, take the reins and do something in the children's ministry that, that actually matters um, rather than just show up and leave on, on Sunday and, and hang out with kids and that kind of stuff. Um, so it was an awkward time for me, especially as a, as a 22-year-old, to sit down with some volunteers and say, I don't know if this is for you. Like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, like, it, number one, it was awkward because I don't like confrontation, and I really would rather just love people and just... You know, man, you're awesome. Come on in. Yeah, you're doing a great job, or uh, or whatever. But um, and then number two, he's like, these guys are like, some are like my four volunteers. I'm like, see you later, okay? <laughs> like that's that's terrifying. Um, but what I what I began to notice is, um, and this is the same with the people that you hire, um, people who um, are attractive, not like they're good looking, but like they're attractive and, and people want to be around them and, and they're the kind of people, the culture that you want to create, um, those are the type of people, those are the type of volunteers that will draw in more people like them. Um, that totally probably made no sense. So, if you want, if you want, um, you know, for example, we have uh, an amazing couple that's here with us this weekend, Stephanie and Tegan. If you want Stephanie, and, people like Stephanie and Tegan, who are that caliber of leaders, they're, uh, they're amazing, they're committed, and they don't just show up and do it, but they're like committed and they want to build relationships with those kids. If that's the type of people you want, then you need to make sure that those people are in the face, not, the, uh, not necessarily the, uh, the, the people who aren't committed to it. Or, um, I mean, if you've got some weird people who, um, they're weird and they attract weird people, you're, it's a very like sensitive subject, and I, I know probably I'm offending some, some people, but... Um, really, it's it's all who all in the culture that you want to create. Um, so I think that's something that I didn't learn, but I learned it really quick because I'm like I asked myself. I said if I was a, if I was a you know just an attendee of Evergreen, would I want to volunteer in the children's ministry? If I was you know kind of interested in, in volunteering, <laughs> I'm like I look at the people. I'm like I like to serve with people I love. But I think that's why why youth ministries. Like, they have, like, stinking so many stupid volunteers. Makes me so angry. <laughs> They're like, get over here and serve with the kids. But they, the reason is, is you've got, like, these 19, 20-year-olds who their friends are in high school. And so they're like, yeah, I'm going to hang out with my friends and volunteer. And they're just hanging out. Mm -hmm. And how cool would it be to just have a bunch of friends and a bunch of people who are like-minded and love each other who come in and serve <laughs> on Sunday and... You don't have to organize where, hey, they're going to go out to uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Praise God, Olympia got a Buffalo yeah, Wild Wings. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to go out to Buffalo Wild Wings for lunch after service. Like, there's this awesome culture, and, and really it essentially becomes almost like this small group of, of people who are passionate about the same thing. And, uh, and they're all pushing the ball forward mm -hmm. together, not like, mm -hmm. uh, where are we going with this thing? Or pushing like five different balls down the field in different directions. If you can have uh, just an amazing, amazing culture, uh, volunteer-wise, like you're you're gonna be solid. Um, number five. Uh, can I ask you a question on that? Yes, absolutely. How if you ever have questions, just raise your hand. By the way. How was your lead pastor at you kind of encouraging them out of the ministry? Yeah, yeah, it was a it was an interesting talk. And in fact, I first went to my executive pastor because that's kind of the the way that it, that it works at Evergreen, but. Uh, I went there and <laughs> I I have to, um, you really need to come in humility and uh, and I, I kind of used this excuse for the first, you know, year, like I would go up and say, hey, I don't really know what to do in this situation, can you help me out? And, uh, and sometimes I'd use the excuse as, hey, I'm 22, like, can you help me out? <laughs> but uh, I, I went up to him and I said, hey, can you, can you help me out? Like, I need to know how to navigate this. Um, and here's here's my reasoning. Here's why. Like, here's here's what I believe it could impact him. And uh, man, I like I'm so stinking grateful for the the team that I serve under. Um, you know, when I was doing my interview process, the one thing that they were worried about is my age. You know, like I said, I was 20, 22, and the next was like 38. Um, so they were worried about the credibility that I would have. And so I told them in that interview, I said, 
the one thing that the one thing that would help build that credibility for me is for you guys to be really 100% behind any decision that I, that I would um, that I would make. Obviously, like there needs to be a sense of trust. Like, you know, for example, like I'm not gonna fire somebody um, and then say, hey, you need to be behind that. I'm gonna go to them first and then try to get that approved. But if they really understand and they really believe that you are that you really um, like that that's really on your heart. I think that um, depending on depending on who your who your pastor is, like if if they really believe that you're the person that, that needs to lead the children's ministry, I would hope that they would that they would say, Okay, here's the next steps we need to make. So for us it was um, and it could have been like for us we gave the guy the option. We said, Hey, um, we are we're kind of re redoing our small group stuff. We've got some new leaders coming in. Um, and we, uh, we'd love to have you help out during the week kind of thing. So it doesn't mean that they're not necessarily serving in the kids' ministry anymore, just less of the face. Because th these people were the face. Like, people were dropping their kids off and like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving my, my kids with this creepy-looking guy. Like, what the heck am I doing? Um, and so I think that that would be... Um, and then, uh, obviously, if they don't want to do that during the week, just encourage them to... Uh, to serve somewhere else, and it is, it's awkward, like, it's an awkward conversation, and I never, like, I would always, like, heard people, like, talking about, yeah, I had to ask somebody not to volunteer, and I'm like, no, you didn't, like, you're lying, and then, like, I'm, like, in my first few weeks, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have to do this right now, like, I didn't want to do it, but I guess I, I knew, like, it had to be done, um, I don't know if that answered your question at all, but, anyways, my lead pastor, my executive pastor, um, very grateful that I have them, and they uh, were behind me 100%. So, um, yes? Were any of the volunteers that you asked to step down um, significantly older than you and been in the positions for years and years and years and really super like, no, this is mine? Like, um, well, uh, one of them was not one of them was not super older than me. Um, in fact, he was like a 19-year-old. So. That was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. But the other one, he could have been my father. Um, and that's another thing, like, um, that I, I kind of have on here, and I'd love to, if you young, if you younger people, like, want to talk about how to build credibility as a young children's pastor or a young person in ministry, or if we have time at the end, I'd love to. But, uh, yeah, so that was, that was the key to, to dealing with that, is having my, my pastors behind me 100%. Um, and it wasn't like a, it wasn't like pretty. I'm not gonna lie and say that. Oh yeah, it worked out great. It was awesome. It was amazing. No, it was like, like uh, he he kind of came in very very hot headed. Uh, like he kind of stormed into the office one time. Like it was awkward. Like uh, and he's like, I need to talk with Chad. I need to talk with Abe, who's my executive pastor. And he's like, I want to talk to them now. And we're like, what? What are you talking about? Like this is crazy. And we knew like we knew that it, what it had to do with, but. Um, I, the family still attends the church. Uh, in fact, they they have their kids. All of their kids are serving in, in kids ministry still, and they really believe in kids ministry. And finally, I think after the the initial like shock of like, wait a second, like you're uh, really like sending me out. Yeah, you're sending, you're sending me out. Um, they realize, okay, I under I understand, and um, maybe I wouldn't fit in like necessarily fit in with that culture. Um, and it's not like I guess it's not like necessarily culture, but it's really like passion as well. Um, if, if you've got somebody who's passionate about children's ministry and serving under you, um, they might be passionate about the wrong things, which is you know so, something else, but this person was like, I'll show up and leave and that kind of thing. Um, and very, uh, like there every single week, like we have three services and he was there for two services and like he would go to the, to the night service and that would be a service of ten. So he's like two volunteers in one every week. But um, what I'm trying to get at is if um, if they're not super passionate about it, they might be like really hurt about it for a week or two, but then they're going to say, oh, I guess I'm not really passionate about it, whatever, see you later. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so he was older than me. I feel like I go on these crazy tangents. Um, he was older than me, and that was an interesting, interesting thing. Um, any other questions on that? Maybe long? All right. Number five. 
To the guy that I'm going to say needs to be your best friend. The head of facilities needs to be <laughs> your best friend. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bring mm -hmm. cookies. Yes. Seriously. Like, I, uh, this is actually a hint that Brent gave to me. He said, when, because, uh, like I said, Brent left Evergreen to go to the, the network office, and his position that he is today, is in today, and he said, you need to find Chris, and you need to make him your best friend. Not this Chris, but Chris was our facility, is our facilities guy. And, uh, I was like, okay, so I didn't remember that until, like, a weekend, I'm like, who's this bald, scary guy, like, running around the office, like, you know, facilities guys some kind, sometimes can be scary, sometimes they wouldn't be really nice. Um, but, uh, anyway, so, I, uh, obviously, like, with our big remodel, like, he was a huge part of that, because, you know, prepping the walls, and, and we, like, moved some walls, and redid the carpet, and all this kind of stuff that we had to do, he was a big part of it. Um, I have three, do I have three? Oh no, check this out. I got four <laughs> ways for you to um, help make your facilities guy your best friend. Um, number one, um, you do this for your volunteers all the time, or at least you should if you're not, you really need to. Um, if they're working on something in your area, like specific to kids ministry, like you put in a work request and you're like, ask them to do this, um, maybe like they've sent some of their staff or whatever to take care of it. Go and offer them like a coffee or something. Um, odds are they'll turn, they'll turn you down um, because, you know, for whatever reason. But if you go offer them that coffee, like, you, you automatically gain that credibility. You're like, okay, that's sweet. Like, I want to, next time they are asked to help out with something, they're like, okay, sweet. I might, like, get asked to get a coffee or something because I could really use a coffee right now. You know, we had, we had guys working on the remodel like late into the night towards the end of because we had to meet our deadline. So like I went out and bought them dinner at some like nasty taco truck because that's what they really wanted. And, and uh, you charge it to your volunteer budget or, or your staff expense budget or whatever. Um, or if you, you know, if you really love Jesus, you can pay for it yourself or something like that. <laughs> um, more people than I. Um, number, number two is if they're working on something like a, like a big project, uh, for example, like painting. Um, Shelly, you just got done painting. Yeah? Oh, we're in but you the middle get to do of it. it. No big deal. Oh, you're in the middle of it. Yeah, no big deal. What are you doing here? <laughs> um, if you can, if you can pick up a paintbrush for, you know, 10 minutes and say, I can help you for 10 minutes or, or whatever, if, uh, if something needs to get moved and it's really heavy and, and they're the people that are supposed to move it, and they're like, yeah, we only have one person, so we'll move it later. And you, you just say, hey, I can help you. Um, or say, hey, I've got somebody who's really strong and muscular who can help you. I'm like, uh, no, I'm not talking about me. I know. I, I can be very deceptive. But, um, like, help, help them uh, in, in areas that they're working on. Uh, I worked my tail off my first three months during that remodel because I would say, and I would paint afterwards, or I'd, like, help prep the walls, and I would uh, help lay down carpet if I needed to, whatever like needed to be done um, in order to, to help them and help them get home with their families because they're not just facilities people, but they're people who have families and they have life as well. Uh, like that, that built so much credibility. Um, number three, don't lean on them for every single detail. Um, you have people in the church who would love to do that type of work. We've got this like butt ugly like check-in stand right now that's for our guest check-in stand that just hasn't gotten painted since we did our big remodel. And it's like this, like, um, so we did this, like, Great Northwest theme. Um, you know, greens and browns and some blues. And uh, the this check-in stand um, looked great before we did the remodel because it was, like, a match. I mean, it looked great in the, re in the area, but um, it was just ugly. So, anyways... Uh, I, I guess I could have two options. I could say, hey, Chris, can you, um, can you and your guys figure out a time to paint this? Or I could say, I know a volunteer who, um, unfortunately, he's out of work right now, but he's, like, bored at home, and he's great with uh, sanding stuff down and painting it. Uh, I'm going to empower that guy to do it. And that does two things. Number one, you just ask the question, because uh, our facilities guy is super, um, we're blessed with him. He's, he's very creative. He's got a great eye for for uh, you know, paint colors and, and color of carpet and that kind of stuff. So I asked him, I said, hey, I've got somebody coming. 
next week, and that like automatically brings his guards on. He's like, oh, thank you, Jesus, I don't have to do anything else. <laughs> and uh, but I say, I just want to ask you, um, what you know, what colors would you recommend painting? And, like that kind of thing. If um, you know, maybe you don't have somebody who's that creative, and you say, I want to paint it myself. And, uh, then maybe you need the supplier to say, hey, I've got somebody coming to paint this, because then they know that you're not relying on them for every single detail. Um, if there's like, um, we have this air hockey table in, in, our, in the lodge, is what we call it, our, our main kids area. <laughs> These pucks will like fly and hit the wall, and like there's like a ton of chip marks in the wall. I could ask my facilities guys to get out their paintbrushes and, and paint over it, or I can, I personally, if I wanted to, could go down there and spend 10 minutes with a paintbrush and just touch up those little tiny nicks in the wall. Um, things like that. Um, if there's something that you can do, or if you can empower one of your volunteers to do, do it, and you'll gain so much credibility for the time when you really need them to do something. Um, yes? Is it time already? Oh my goodness. Okay, um, if you have a reason to stick up for your facilities guy, um, stick up for them. So, hey, it was my fault that they didn't get this done, so uh, I apologize. And then, um, man, I'll just tell you uh, three other things. I won't go into the details of things I didn't learn in college. Um, budgets. Yeah. Oh, if you're going to school, you're going to school for ministry, you're going to school for anything in life, take a stinking finance class of some sort. <laughs> I didn't, and I hate my life for it right now. Um, like personal finance, whatever. Um, just so you can understand finance a little bit better. Um, number. Uh, what time does this end? Does anybody know? Six minutes ago. Oh, six minutes ago. Oh, six minutes ago. Okay. Um, rocks of the church, like people who have been in the church for a while, um, they're not gonna necessarily. Like, I'm talking like super old people who are like walking around with canes. Like they're not necessarily gonna be um, something that you can leverage. But you really want to honor them, um, and that has there's no strings attached to that. Um, we have senior adult lunches every once in a while, and I'm there, and I want to serve them, and I want to have lunch with them. So honor those people. And then number number five, number eight is uh, have a I'm so <laughs> flustered right now. Have a global perspective of uh, have a global perspective of, of ministry. Um, don't just think that it's your ministry and uh, maybe the church that you're in and that's it. But focus on your community. Uh, Lauren's in, we're in a um, Olympia area children's ministry network and we hang out once a month with other children's pastors. Um, that's a huge thing to do. And then all of that is like missions and that kind of stuff. I'm so sorry that I went way over. I should have been keeping an eye on that. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'm here all weekend. Um, feel free to ask me. Um, and then the, uh, the next thing happening is Another lab, right? So, yeah. Thank you guys for joining me. And